Are you feeling feverish? The Indiana Fever have four wins this season, and Fever beat writer Tony East joins host Natalie Heverin to chat about everything from Aaliyah Boston to how the team has looked under first-year head coach Christy Sides and what's next for the team. Ogumba Wallet for the win! You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hello and happy Friday. You are locked on to women's basketball. I'm host Natalie Heverin and I'm a features writer and the Atlantic 10 beat reporter for the next. Thanks for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Women's Basketball is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Today, we'll be chatting all things Indiana Fever from the team's winning streak, you don't say that very often, to Aaliyah Boston, and where the team stands a quarter of the way through this WNBA season. Joining me today is Tony East, who covers the Indiana Fever for the next. So, Tony, the Fever already have four wins in 10 games compared to just five total last year, uh, with two wins this week. How did the Fever pull out the win yesterday against the Sky? A couple of things you just said blew my mind, but I think the biggest one was quarter of the way through the season. How are we already a quarter of the way through the season? Yeah, they're rolling two wins in a row. This is their second winning streak in the last two seasons, and they did it against good teams this time, beating the Mystics at home by a bajillion points, uh, 22, I believe, was the exact number, and then beating the Sky. And this Sky win last night was particularly impressive to me because they just lost to that team last week, right, in that same building, and showing a little bit of incremental growth every single day. That's what's been so impressive about this team for much of the season. And in that win, too, they got over their late game execution bugaboos and got some enough late stops. Dana Evans tried to make that not reality. And Kelsey Mitchell had a big shot at the end to give them the win specifically in that one. But that's what's been impressive is just like their incremental game to game growth where you can see them going, okay, we had too many turnovers last time. We'll clean that up. Okay, we allowed too much middle penetration. We'll clean that up. And Marina Mabry killed them with some shooting in, in in last night's game, had a career night, unbelievable performance. But you can just see them getting a little bit better at all these things, and that allows them to look like a real team. Like, everybody was contributing in, in last night's one. I think they had six players in double figures. It was Victoria Vivian's best game of the season. It was Maya Caldwell's best game of the season. Smith, Boston, Mitchell were, of course, fantastic. Like, they just look so connected now in a, in a way that they haven't really for the last two years. They look really good right now. And, you know, when we were planning out this episode, we talked about how the team was closing out games, but they kind of turned it around. How have the Fever closed out games this week and how has it been different from uh, the first few games of the season? Yeah, that was a painful theme for them, right? They got their win over the Dream in the clutch, but they, they blew it late against the Aces. They blew it late against the Sun twice. You know, they, they were just not quite able to get over the hump late in these games. And it was really crushing for Christy sides who felt like they had made those meaningful strides and they were right there. And, you know, she kept citing their point differential, right? Negative. I think it was before the, uh, they smoked the mystics. It was the minus 1.6 points per game, which is like, she's like, that's one possession, right? If we turn it over one less time and score, we're, you know, six and three or whatever it was at the time. And so turnovers were a big thing for her. She felt like their late game execution wasn't quite there. Uh, on, on that front, they weren't taking care of the ball to, to actually get a shot up, which is extremely important. And, you know, I still think their clutch defense needs kind of a, a, a kick in the pants at some point. Uh, da- again, Dana Evans was was running through them last night. The Aces scored a bajillion points in the fourth quarter in Gainbridge a few weeks ago. But their offensive executions looked way more crisp. I think that's been big for them. They're not wasting any possessions. They're not wasting any time. And it helps that we'll talk about a lot of this in the second segment. Aaliyah Boston has really figured out how to kind of be imposing, pass out of double teams, do her thing in the post in a way that you know that, that she is getting defended by two players or she is enough to be the offense by herself, even in the clutch. She had six points in the final minute against this guy last week. Like they've just figured out who needs to attack and when, and that's been really important. And, you know, with those wins over the Mystics and this guy this week, what has been the feel from the team and availabilities this week? High, high energy vibes. I mean, I put the video up of Christy sides running off the floor after their home win. And 
I think she saw me filming because she like pointed at me and was like fist pumping as she walked off the court. But the, the the team has really matched her energy all season. And that seems like the most daunting task ever, which is a compliment to Christy's side. She's just so like energetic all the time. And that doesn't mean uppy energetic. Like sometimes that is like, guys, come on, like loud, encourage. Not I don't I don't know what the perfect word is. Not not as positive, but still like they match that. And you can see that in media availability and when you talk to players, just that they you know, they really feel that that seeps into the whole team and they're able to kind of match that energy in a way that is productive for the team. And I think that that was not the case necessarily last season. Not that that's that was bad, although they did go five and thirty one. So I suppose you could say it was bad, but they've done a much better job, I think, of of, of matching their coach's energy and, and buying into what she's saying. A lot of them have talked about being excited to come into work, you know, and that's like a a change from last season as well. And you can really feel that, right? The way they talk about each other, the way they talk about what they're doing, the way they talk about what Christy Sides is implementing. You can just feel that that sort of energy is contagious amongst the team. Which leads me right into my next question. How is this year's fever team different from last season's um, other than uh, they're, they're getting wins uh, in the win loss column a little bit faster? Four and six. That means that's on. What's that on? Uh, on full pace. I should be able to do that quickly. Sixteen and twenty-four. You know they went five and thirty-one last year. Obviously, that's the big difference. But uh, it's that Aaliyah Boston is on their team, right? And and it kind of just all goes inside out. I was saying to a couple people before the season, and this was after watching her for probably three practices. I said I think she's the best player on the team, and everybody was like, "Huh? You know, Kelsey Mitchell's amazing." And I'm like, "Yeah, she is. Aaliyah Boston's." better she just kind of is and that's not a shot at kelsey mitchell who's been wonderful and just hit a game winner last night and is averaging 17 points a game Aaliyah boston is amazing right she makes um, almost 70 percent of her shots she cleans up the rebound she's an amazing defensive player and you saw this against the sky last night all of a sudden teams are like crap we have to double team her or she's gonna score and so now a shooter's open somewhere else or boston can pass out of the double teams and like that was a big reason they beat the Mystics so bad as she had six assists and was finding Christy Wallace in the corner at a double teams. I was finding cutters out of these double teams. And it's like, they just have so many more things they can do or go to because they have such a dominant player in the post. And that's opened up stuff for everybody else, right? Erica Wheeler, as soon as she figured out how to play with Aaliyah Boston has found her efficiency in her range a little bit. Melissa Smith's having a wonderful second season. All these players are really doing well in a lot of ways because they can play off of Aaliyah Boston and Boston's done a good job fitting right in. Like, all these players are better. They had a young team last year. All those players have taken a step forward. I don't want to belittle anything that they're doing. A lot of their second-year players look way better than last year. But also, it, they're fitting in with this new all-star player they have in the post, and that's been a big reason for their steps forward. And you talked about this a little bit, but how is year one of the Christie Sides era going? <laughs> great <laughs> um great yeah she's been exactly what i think this team kind of needed which is you know that kind of coach who can relate to them with you know an emotional kick in the pants every day but also a defensive focus that this team really needed and i still think their defense might be a little bit of a cause for concern honestly if you wanted to point to something they're still 10th in defensive rating their offense has really been what's carried them they're i think third in offensive rating at the time of us speaking right this second but you know they have no middle principles that they really rely on and you know because of leah boston's there teams are scared to go middle anyway and they they've at least shown defensive improvement this season They're, they they like to pressure uh they like to play well in transition and, and every team wants to play well in transition but they really focus on that in training camp when i could watch them and uh that, that defensive focus i think has been really big for this team they're turning other teams over quite a bit which has been significant they're actually um, first, third, excuse me, in allowing turnovers this season, which has been big for them. So uh, just letting them run, getting stops, keeping teams out of the paint has been big for them. And uh, that that's kind of where she's flexed the most. But also, I mean, getting their offense up to third after what, what it was last year has been impressive. But they were last in defensive rating three years in a row. I, I know I know it's 10th. Like, we're not talking about a significant improvement. But finally having that growth, being a team that, can at least defend a little bit and is also making a bunch of threes and scoring like crazy. You can really tell that she's figured out how to coach this team, got everybody in the right seat in the bus and it is the right coach for this team so far. And how have the fever surprised you so far this season? Oh man. Uh, the, the defensive growth a little bit. I think the three point shooting has impressed me. Uh, they're still not that high in the three point percentage rankings, but just seeing, um, 
Christy Wallace drill him all the time. Kelsey Mitchell's at like 38%. Erica Wheeler's hit her groove after a slow start. Victoria Vivian's is at 35%. They've been a bad shooting team every year I've covered them. That's been really surprising, like as a reliable weapon for them every game. And they're not even that high on the attempts ranking either, but uh, that, that's been a big weapon for them. But it, it's weird to say that like nothing is super surprising, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's just like, Everything that they would have hoped to happen to be better this year kind of is happening, right? Like Aaliyah Boston's great. All these second year players are clearly have clearly taken a step forward. And Alyssa Smith is kind of a three level scoring weapon, even despite her inconsistencies. Lexi Hall's defense looks wonderful. Queen Egbo looks way more consistent. She's been really good this season. And of course, Aaliyah Boston, as we're talk about, has been amazing. Mitchell's still been good. Like everybody's kind of doing exactly what was expected of them. Christy side just put them in positions to succeed. Like, I guess it's surprising that it's happening for every player at the same time, maybe, but everybody's kind of doing exactly what would have been hoped if this team was going to be four and six after 10 games. And they've done a good job. Coming up next, we'll get into how Aaliyah Boston is making an impact this season. Today's episode is brought to you by bird dogs. Summer is here. So it's time to pull out your bird dogs out of your closet Bird dogs are stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Even better, Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Perfect for summer. Bird dogs are great, and I've gotten them as gifts for my brothers, my dad, my fiance. Go to birddogs.com slash NBA for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash NBA for a free Yeti-style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Locked On's NBA Mock Draft Special is here, and it's bigger than ever. Follow along the entire first round in a six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NBA Big Board on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. So, Tony, starting in your... uh, Well, starting with your WNBA draft coverage, going into your season preview, uh, you've been talking a lot about Aaliyah Boston, and she's been a huge part of the Fever success so far this season. Can you tell me a little bit about her performance in the first quarter of the season? Uh, can I just talk for 10 minutes straight? No, that would <laughs> not be good podcasting. But I mean, it's kind of crazy to see how quickly th- this this is kind of what I've been workshopping as maybe something I'll write about next. The evolution of the Aaliyah Boston experience, right? And I, and I will say all this through the guise of double teams, right? Because when I met her, we're on the Gamebridge Fieldhouse Court. This is after her introductory press conference. And she's looking down. And she's like, whoa. She asked me. She said, is this how big the pain is in the WNBA? I was like, yeah. She's like, this is bigger than college. I was like, yeah. She's so psyched, right? She's going to have more room to operate and and do her things in the post and make her post moves and spin and pirouette around her pivot foot and score. And she was psyched about that. And on draft night, and this was in both two of my stories, Lynn Dunn and Christy Sides were like, yeah, she's going to be great for us because – She's not going to get double teamed. She got double teamed all the time in South Carolina because there's no three in the key and all these players could just swarm her all the time and make it really hard for her to score. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And so you saw in their first seven or eight games, teams were not double teaming Aaliyah Boston and she shot 70 plus percent and tore them apart and was really good. And so it took eight games for opponents to go, yeah, we should double team her like they did in college, right? So that fun little experience where she got to explore the bigger paint and not get double teamed last at eight games of her pro career. And now all of a sudden she's right back to that because that's the best way to stop the fever is to let someone else do really well, to try to let someone else score. Like a big shot for the fever in their game against the sky last night. I tweeted a picture of it. It's really grainy quality. So I apologize to anyone who actually wants to see the picture is Aaliyah Boston's in the post. She's being fronted and Maya Caldwell's in the opposite corner. And Maya Caldwell's defender is under the basket, getting ready to double team Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston doesn't even have the ball yet, but they don't want her to even get the post touch. And so the fever just swing it across to Maya Caldwell, who drills the open three with a couple seconds before halftime. And they're up one at the break and they win that game by two points. Like that shot was huge. And it was 
open because no one wants Aaliyah Boston to get easy paint touches. And so this has been a long-winded way of saying she's so good already that all the stuff about how big the paint is in these double teams doesn't matter. They already have to double team her because she's so freaking good. She finishes her plays. Uh, she was shooting 70% before the Sky game. It's 66% now. She scoops up every rebound. She's averaging over three offensive rebounds per game. Her assist numbers are climbing because she figures out how to pass out of these double teams. Her defense is at worst as advertised, if not better, because of there's no middle stuff. She's just right there ready to stop. It's like... It's everything a young fever team needed. She's a creator in the post. And it has been wonderful to see how dominant she is and see that everybody who told me how good she is was exactly right. She is an amazing player. Well, you talk about, you know, she wasn't really double teamed until the last two games. Well, she scored 23 points and 19 points, shooting a combined 17 of 24 in the last two games. Um, which are just not numbers that you see every day from a rookie in the WNBA. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, has she surprised you? Um, or, you know, is this what you were expecting her to do right away? I think I'm a, a little on the surprised side. Let me think. I'm trying to think of the perfect emotion, right? Because like in preseason, the very first game I got to see her in person because their first preseason game was not on TV. Very fun. Um, they hosted the wings and I think Aaliyah Boston would say this, like Sierra McCowan kicked her butt, right? She just did. And it was like a welcome to the W moment going against someone like T who's huge and imposing. And she also drilled a transition three. And if you're Aaliyah Boston, you're like, wait, bigs weren't doing that in, in college. Right. And then her first run of opponents in the pros is you go against Bree Jones with the sun and then you're playing the Liberty and John Quell. And then you're playing the, the, uh, the dream. And then you got, Bree Jones again, and then Asia Wilson. It's like, when does this stop? When do these opponents stop? And so early in the season, she was in foul trouble a lot. She fouled out of their first game, four fouls against the Dream, four fouls against the Sun the second time, five against the Aces. But I think at, that as she's gotten more comfortable, the surprise for me has been how quickly she's already adapted to like what these pros are really good at. She's only been in foul trouble once since their first five games when she had five fouls against Brittany Griner, who I think we can all forgive that <laughs> as, as fans of the game, um, and has still continued to evolve offensively and figure out how to play off of her teammates. Like I think that just kind of speaks to how high IQ she is, that she can't adjust that quickly. So I think the surprise for me is, is more about how quickly she's adjusted to the pro game. Because I thought she'd be really good, but I also thought she'd go through every single rookie's, you know, oh, wow, the players are way bigger, way faster kind of stuff. And she did for five games. <laughs> and now she's already like, nah, no problem. I got this. You know, what have been her keys to success so far this season? And how do you see her continuing to grow and develop? Uh, the keys, patience in the post, right? The pivot foot stuff that she was so masterful at at South Carolina, drawing those Tim Duncan comps. I got to ask her about that. She does know Tim Duncan, but I think that that's a little overblown even in her head. Um, but just you know, masterful pivot foot and, and patience. And it's just so impressive how she is in the post. She can get her own shot even when she's double covered. Like there's no good way to prevent her from getting a good look right at the rim. Wonderful screener. And on defense, like every everything is good. Like uh, I noticed this in practice. Like I have a whole note section in my phone of stuff that I've noticed her do that's either stood out to me or impressed me or just like I want to include this in a story about Aaliyah Boston it's all of this stuff and I don't know if you can even see this on the uh, on the on the YouTube screen and like the first day of practice she's like calling out every coverage and pointing and all this stuff I'm like aren't you the first year player like isn't this your first practice like all that stuff is crazy the growth stuff I think is going to be as her game scoots farther from the basket. Like she just had a play against uh, the mystics in their home game four days ago. She caught it at the three point line. She faces up Maisha Hines Allen and just takes her off the dribble right to the rim from the three point line. I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you stop that? If you're an opposing, I think it was me shines Allen. If I'm wrong, uh, I apologize, but just took her right to the rim. And I'm like, Oh man, if she can dribble in from the perimeter, like, what do you do? What, what is the way to defend her? And so maybe it's that maybe it's, three-point shooting maybe it's being able to defend guards somewhat but i don't even know if you'd want her to do that if you're the fever you probably just want her under the basket captaining the defense doing all those things i said she was doing in training camp so the evolution i guess is 
moving the game away from the rim. But why would you want that if you're the Fever, if she's already so dominant down low? So I guess it's just adding a little minor skills or getting better at the stuff she's good at. But it's, it's hard to envision what that even looks like. It's only been 10 games, and I'm already wowed by how good she is. Coming up next, we'll discuss where the Fever are heading after the first quarter of the season. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Buying tickets to events shouldn't be stressful, so instead, use Game Time. It's fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I love the Game Time app because you can see the view from your seat before you buy the ticket, which I just think is so cool if you haven't been to an arena. Uh, or a venue before you know what you're getting into before you buy the ticket. Game Time is the place for last minute deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, as I mentioned earlier, we're a quarter of the way through the regular season. I know it's hard to believe, but what do you expect to see from the Fever before the All-Star break, which is about a month away? how is that possible <laughs> how um yeah i continued growth right the, again they won three of their last four clearly rounding into some form i'm gonna uh, maybe i'm just a skeptic in general because i just watched them go five and 31 last season i don't mean that to be critical like they have a lot of new people and new faces but i want to see the consistency continue i think that will be the next step for them because they do have uh, like young players in general can be inconsistent and in general, even their best players this year in Alyssa Smith, Kelsey Mitchell have a tendency to kind of, you know, have some roller coaster sort of games and, and that's fine. Um, but even Kelsey Mitchell last night, she hit the game winning shot. She had a wonderful performance. She got over her late game bugaboo because she missed a, a layup late against the aces. But I think she was four for 12 on the night. Like you know, the, the shot wasn't quite there, even though she's been drilling her threes all season, like a little more consistency from everyone, I think would go a really long way. And so I think that they'll, of course, strive for every team wants to be consistent every game. That'd be huge for, for planning purposes, for scouting purposes, all sorts of stuff. So that, that there's a lot of young players on this team that I think that is going to be vital to watch for, right? They're, they're not going to get 17 points on ridiculous shooting from Victoria Vivians every night that like they got last night. Maya Caldwell had her best game of the season. So I, I'll be curious how that all shakes out and how they kind of go from there. And, uh, a little more on the minor side, I'll be curious how their rotation kind of evolves, right? We've seen Maya Caldwell have one DNP, and then she played a ton yesterday because she was really good. And last night, Victoria Vivians played more, way more than Lexi Hall because she was playing so well, but Hull's been starting, but they're both playing about 16 minutes a game. And Christy Wallace is playing a ton because she can kind of play on the guard and the wing spots, and she's making a bunch of threes at like 44% for the season. That's another consistency thing, but in the opposite direction, right? Will that go away? Will that maintain? So a lot of uh, my questions about where they go from here, about a little bit of the smaller things, you know, who's slots in where, who's playing with who, and knock on wood, Natalie, they have not had a single injury this season. Not a single player. Oh. Has, yeah, and that is always scary to hear. It's amazing they've made it 10 games without it, but, you know, we've been tracking with Lucas Seehofer about our, our W injuries to track them as, as the next project this year. I haven't had to send him a single message the whole season. That's going to happen eventually, I'd imagine. And that will also be something. How do they respond to that? And I don't want to say that that's like something you look look at in the future, but it's going to be something they have to adjust to at some point, I'd imagine. They do have a really good medical staff. But uh, there's all sorts of little things. I'll be curious about how, how they manage and get around if their consistency goes away or some of their – Role players stop shooting as well. How do they get everybody in the exact optimized role? But in general, I'll just be curious if they can keep going because I haven't seen them play this well in my three years, really, on the beat covering this team. And who else has impressed you so far this season? I think I know one name uh, you want to talk about. Say it. Say it. Who is it? I, I think you want to talk about Melissa Smith. 
I do want to talk about Alyssa Smith. Yes, um, a, a little up and down, but you know the thing is, she talked about an AU how she played the five a lot and that helped her kind of just figure out her interior game quite a bit and hey look at that her two point percentage is way up from last year which has been the big source of her growth because her three has not been falling at all but she can really score inside the arc this year hitting 50 percent of her twos and a lot of those are self-created which has been really huge for her right she can catch it at, at the at the elbow or beyond the arc, do her patented Melissa Smith shot fake, put it on the floor, do a spin move, boom, she's open, she's going to score. She can make plays around the basket. She has also benefited from having some high-low game with Aaliyah Boston that's fitting in really well. So her efficiency looks a lot better. She's way more forceful on the glass. Like her rebounding percentage, her rebound rates are way up. Her assist rates are up, right? She's finding some nice passes. Every time she has a nice pass, you can see Christy sides give like a little like, yeah, like a little fist bump over on the sideline. Well, if you want to see the fever, if you want to understand the fever vibe, watch it when you watch a game. Don't watch what they're doing. Watch Christy Sides pace the baseline and wear her emotions on her sleeve every single freaking possession. Every time there's a good play, she's amped. Every time there's a bad play, she's she drops and her glasses fall off her face and all this stuff happens. It, it's wonderful. But yeah, Nalissa Smith's growth has been just fantastic this year. And you can finally see that. You know, her shot consistency is a big part of the next step for her. But you can see that she's figuring out how to impact the W game. And the other player I really want to – well, there's two more. Ugh, I don't want to talk for forever. Christy Wallace has been really impressive to me. They haven't really had a player like her in my time covering the team that can fill in on the wing as a shooter and as, as a guard, as a creator. And I knew she could do the guard stuff. That's kind of what they were attracted to and they got her from the dream. But the shooting, the wing play – has been really valuable to this team. There's a reason she's playing so much. She also played for Christy Sides last year, which helps. She knows the culture. She knows what she has to do. Uh, how about another Baylor Bear to close this out? How about three Baylor players? Queen Egbo, the maturity growth from her has been really noticeable. Not that she was immature last year, but she's she's really grown as a person this year, and she's been really good in a lot of games this year. Where it's like, oh, man, every time Queen Egbo is in the game, good stuff is happening. And like when you're backing up Aaliyah Boston, there's a lot of pressure to – you know, hold the forward and do your thing when you come in there. I felt terrible for Queen Egbo that she's been so close to a double-double so many times. 10 points, 8 rebounds, didn't quite get it. 9 points, 10 rebounds, didn't quite get it. 6 points, 10 rebounds, didn't quite get it. But she's been really good this season being a force around the rim on both ends and has really shown a lot of maturity growth that I think has been needed for her. So her stats are going to look worse this season from last year just because she's playing like half as much as you would on a team with Leah Boston. But She's looked really good as well. I could keep going, but those three stand out to me. It's just funny that they all went to the same school. Uh, and then is there anyone you think, you know, as the uh, rotations get ironed out um, possibly in the next month or so, who's primed for a breakout in this next Ooh. chunk of the season? A breakout. Man, when Lexi Hall's three start going in, <laughs> it's going to happen. I mean, she had that game against the sky the one that they lost Kalia copper did play they did beat them without Kalia copper so i'll say the Kalia copper sky game to make things easy where she was drilling all her threes and looked just unstoppable like she had a confident pull up in transition that i was like whoa lexi and she drilled it right like that kind of game made me go okay she's gonna figure this out at some point she had 13 points in that game and the next game went over four but has had a couple good efficiency game shooting 50 percent or better and three games in a row since then so in her last five uh, she's now at 45% from the field, 33% from deep. Like if she can just continue to get a little bit better finishing the plays, her defense has been so good this year. So good. There's a reason they keep starting her and that's mostly her defense, right? They put her on other teams, best players all the time. I think when the shot starts falling, you're going to see that breakout happen. And I know she knows it's going to happen. She keeps shooting. She knows that she's open. She knows she can do it. I've seen her in practice do it countless times. I think she's one that's prime for it. The fever really believe in her. She believes in herself. I think that is the the big one I would point to. Erica Wheeler's kind of found her groove recently. I don't know if breakout's the right word for her, but just a little more consistency. But I think th those two names stand out to me. Maybe a little bit Grace Berger, although she doesn't really play enough to be like a breakout candidate, but she's looked a lot more comfortable recently. By the way, ha Grace Berger has to have the craziest leg muscles ever because she dribbles with her knees bent way lower than any other player I've ever watched. I don't know how she like stays balanced and doesn't fall over besides that her legs are just totally jacked but you can see her see her excuse me uh really finding her groove as well she looked really good in their game against minnesota uh last week so they have a couple of players who all like are like one little thing away 
from a breakout, whether that's Erica Wheeler's and Lexi Hall shot making or Grace Berger's just like connectivity, putting it all together like she did at IU. So those would be the three uh, that stand out to me. But I mean, any of their young players could really take off at any time. Last thing, looking ahead on the schedule, is there a game in the next week or two that stands out to you? I got the dream coming up next. Um, and I just in general think that Christy Sides versus her old team is fun. They already beat the dream once and the dream look a lot better right now. So that's one that, of course, I think is like a good you know check of how you're doing uh, and, and where you're headed. But in general, like their schedule coming up is really fun. They've got the aces twice before the end of the month and then at Phoenix. And to me, when I look at, at the Fever team, Phoenix is kind of the where are you headed opponent, right? I think they're better than Seattle and Minnesota right now. The records point make that abundantly clear. Uh, they beat Minnesota in Minnesota. Uh, if they can be better than Phoenix, then they're one team away from a, a playoff team. And they lost to Phoenix. They were up eight going into the fourth quarter, but they lost to Phoenix at home uh, a couple days ago. They're in Phoenix later this month. Like, can they beat Phoenix? Can they beat the Mercury? That would be one that makes me go, okay, they, they have a chance to be one of the top eight this year. I don't think anyone thinks they're a contender or anything, but you know, that's one of the teams of many. But that's one of the teams that I'm tracking. Like, are they as good as this team? Can they be as good as this team as they push towards being in that mix for one of the playoff spots this season? Thank you for joining me today, Tony. Where can the people find you and your work? Yes, Tony R. East on Twitter. Finally got that stupid old little thing out of there. Uh, we won't talk about that, Natalie. And, of course, at the next hoops covering the fever, I should have stories soon on the early days of Christy Sides as a head coach and Victoria Saxton, who we didn't get to talk about because she's not playing very much, but surprising everybody making a deep young fever team as a third-round pick on the roster. Got to talk to her about that experience, calling her mom after making the team, all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, looking forward to it. Thanks for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. Every dayers, make sure to tune in tomorrow to hear from our WNBA draft experts, Hunter, M, and Lincoln.